Okay, over to you, Gracious. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. It's my pleasure to be here again in the UK and coming over to Ireland after um, about four years absence due to various circumstances. Uh, though we're having a Zoom meeting, I'm looking forward to meeting everyone come the 10th of June and that week. I want to share, how, how, how long have I got to speak for Pete? Uh, we usually take quite a long time up to uh, half 10 maybe or a bit before and then we usually have a time between half 10 and 11 to discuss or questions okay. so that's our normal form thank you okay so let me just share let me just go straight to the scriptures i would like to read a verse mm -hmm. in 2 corinthians 2 corinthians chapter 3 uh i'll read several verses there from verse 12 to verse 16 <clears throat> Since this new way gives us such confidence, we can be very bold. We are not like Moses who put a veil over his face so that the people of Israel would not see the glory, even though it was destined to fade away. But the people's minds were hardened. And to this day, whenever the old covenant is being read, the same veil covers their minds so they cannot understand the truth. And this veil can be removed only by believing in Christ. Yes, even today, when they read Moses' writings, their hearts are covered with that veil and they do not understand. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit. And wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of, our, of the Lord. And the Lord who is the spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. Uh, from verse 12 where I read, where I began reading, there's something terrible that I noticed there. The way Moses, coming back from God's presence, spoke to the people. It's written there that um, he put a veil over his face so that the people of Israel could not see the glory of God. So this... It's a tragic thing, really, because God's glory is to be manifested, is to be revealed. Uh, what happened was he came back and the, his face was shining and he put a veil like this much more white stuff. It was not white, I'm sure. Something like this. So what they did was they could only hear his voice. They had no ability to add sight to what they were hearing. And that is a tragedy because the people were affected very negatively by that. And my prayer to God is that for all believers who speak the gospel, who preach the gospel, especially for preachers, is that as we speak, the presence of God, the glory of God should be seen, should be known by those listening by those present. I pray that preaching, ministering will not just be words mm -hmm. that people hear, echoes, but that added to what they hear, mm -hmm. they should see the presence, the glory of God, because that's where miracles really, really happen. For Moses, when he put that veil on his face and the people could only hear his voice, it's written there that their hearts were hardened. Their hearts were hardened. And what happens that people hear words and words, and there is no sense of God's presence, no manifestation of God's presence. They are affected negatively in their hearts. They are hardened. That is something I have prayed in Kongsamba and something that is in my heart. 
what is the use for me saying things, saying things, and people who are looking and listening do not sense or feel, there's no manifestation, radiation of the presence of God, of the power of God. Now, that's not somebody manipulating himself, but coming from God's presence, people should not only hear words, but be able to sense, feel, see God's presence. What they see should confirm what they hear. Because if that's not the case, their hearts will be hardened. They get used to the words. They get used to the descriptions. But there's no effect on their hearts. I, 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 I'm, I'm, this I'm sharing partly from my experience and where I am now as I wait before God. At a certain point, I myself, I sort of said to myself, Lord, what is this? I am desperate for your power to be manifested to the people that listen to me, to the people that hear me preach, yes. whether it be in the meeting or to the one person I'm talking to, whether it be in the hospital or in school. I don't just want to be spreading out words, whereas there are things on my face in my life that veil what I am saying so that the people are hearing me as an echo, but what they are seeing is something that veils them. Mm -hmm. So I just want, this is my first Zoom meeting, first meeting here as I'm speaking. I just want to say, brethren, I'm speaking like somebody who has a prayer in his heart for me and for all of us, mm -hmm. that the Lord, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, should so, so move, not just in the hearts of those who hear, but even in the hearts of those who speak, so, so move to take away the veil, the things in my life, the, the things that make people hear words and not believe them because they're not seeing. I think a time has come for people to hear and hear and feel, hear and sense the presence, the power, the glory of God, because that combined breaks the dam, causes people to respond. So Moses had this terrible experience. And there's another one that says in verse 13 that till this day, till this day, when they read Moses' writings, I mean, that's how the Spirit calls the Old Testament, Moses' writings. When they read Moses' writings, the veil is still in their hearts. It's not they're looking at this man who's putting something, but the effects that had on them was that till this day, whenever something comes from Moses, that veil that was on his face is in their hearts. And so they have no ability to understand, to grasp the truth. Wow. I'm talking about Moses, not like somebody who is throwing stones at him because I'm leading a church. I have a family, I have friends, I have people around me that are influenced. I have been influencing for years. And I just pray that my life will be a book, a book that God has written, the Holy Spirit has written, that people who don't know anything or those who have been here for years, listening and seeing and reading will realize that this is the truth and turn to God. Um, what I have been saying so far is such a sad thing, but there is hope there. And the hope is in this verse. I'm, um, this, this is an incredible verse, verse 16. It says, whenever someone yes. turns to the Lord, yes. whenever, yes. when I was a young Christian, I thought that I was at the beginning, but I've now realized concerning me, Whenever my heart turns to the Lord, whenever I get fed up with things as they are, with the status quo, with this settled down life, with this cold heartedness, whenever I get fed up with that, whenever there is a hunger and a thirst in my heart for the Lord to take us, to take me and us further, Whenever that man or woman or person responds, turns, turns. Turning is not always from sin or from things we call negative. Turning sometimes is often from even good things that have become sour and become rituals and 
the absence of the experience of the greatness and the freshness of God's presence. Whenever the heart, a person turns to the Lord with all his heart, the Holy Spirit takes away that veil. Now, that is wonderful to me. That's yes. good news. Yes. That's the thing that has encouraged me, brethren. And I am actually speaking here because my own heart has been exercised. I am being helped. I don't want to speak about it in the past tense. I am being helped by the Holy Spirit to turn to the Lord. Not, I mean, this morning I came to pray, but what could I pray? What would I ask? I just said, Lord, teach me to turn to you with my whole heart. Teach me to turn to you, not in a professional way, not in a ritual manner. Teach me to turn to you with my whole heart. Because whenever that happens, the Holy Spirit springs into action. The Holy Spirit tears down the veils in the minds, in the heart, and opens up a whole new avenue, avenue of understanding on takes away blindness from my heart and makes me see things in Christ, in God, in a new light that I've never seen before. And brethren, it is beautiful. Yeah. It is wonderful. Yeah. And I think that we Christians, especially those who've been going on for many, many years, need to be helped by the Holy Spirit to turn yeah. to God from our hearts yeah. with all our hearts in order for the Holy Spirit to tear down veils of opinions, veils of beliefs, veils of some good things that we've had that have not set, continued to, they have not helped us to have this burning flame continue, but have dampened down everyone. My, may the Holy Spirit find liberty to tear down this veil so as to bring me into this domain of freedom there's a, a new kind of freedom, not just from sin, freedom to behold, freedom to explore, freedom to see things as he leads me. Because it, Jesus said, he will glorify me, the Holy Spirit. Freedom to, to be guided in the truth. Freedom to appreciate God in a new, in a new way that I have not seen before. Because I always say this whenever I speak, there is more in Christ. There is more in God that we have not yet experienced or yet known than that which we have known. And I say this every time I speak now that the best is always ahead of us. The best is always ahead of us. And I don't want to be bound, to be locked in a certain prison of beliefs, of experiences that are past. May the Holy Spirit therefore release those men and women, every one of us that turns to God into this freedom and make believers explorers, really. Brethren, the little measure that I have experienced is exciting. It's liberating. It's wonderful. I mean, ooh. <laughs> I, I suppose... Opening a clinic in Kongsamba for me was, a, at the beginning, was a superficial thing. But God has used it to show me who I am. And through the trials, the difficulties, the failures, my personal failures, and my crying out to God, God has used all those things to show me my need of him today. In fact, I need him today better more than I did in the past. And what I've realized is that whenever I have turned to him, he opens my eyes. He, Brethren, what can I say? There is a freedom, not just from sin, a, a freedom. You know, Israel, the Israelites didn't have the freedom to see Moses' face. There is a freedom for anyone that turns to God to behold the Lord, to behold the glory of Jesus, to be led by the Holy Spirit to understand different aspects, various aspects of who he is. And that changes our day. That, that strengthens the heart. That, that creates a hunger to be like him. That, that creates a hunger to be like what we have seen. That creates a desire in the heart. And uh, so uh, my biggest thing so far is to say in this door section that I've began is that the Holy Spirit is all over. He has been poured out. He's all over. Like in Genesis, we read that the place was covered with darkness and the Holy Spirit moved. The Holy Spirit is all over looking for men and women, believers, Christians, who turn to God in their poverty, 
in their dissatisfaction with where they are at, who turn to God for him to spring into action, to take away veils from our minds, to take away veils from our hearts in order to show us today, this year, in our different contexts, the glory of Jesus, the glory of God as revealed in the face of Jesus Christ. Brethren, the biggest thing is, may God help us to turn to God continuously, constantly. No one should settle down because life becomes really boring. And there are so many things that can make someone settle down. So it goes on there to say, um, to say, for the Lord is the spirit. And wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Oh, brethren, yeah, freedom from sin, but that's not just it. Freedom from all these belief systems and experiences that I've had that make me settle down and be locked up in something that doesn't help me, doesn't help me explore, doesn't help me know more of Jesus, doesn't help me understand God. Freedom to behold his face. Freedom to fellowship. Freedom from accusation. Freedom. Freedom to admire God. How the Holy Spirit rejoices when he finds one believer, one brother, one sister, one person today turning to God from everything else. How he rejoices to hold our hands and to make us see. Because there's a re reason why he wants us to see. When we see, that creates a hunger, that creates desires, that spurs up something in the heart, that excites the spirit, that makes me say, wow, what have, what have I been doing here? Change me, Lord. Change me from what I am. Thank God for all the changes he has accomplished in me so far. But compared to what I'm seeing now, in the Lord, I need to be changed. I need to be changed. And that prayer, that desire, makes someone to be available, ready for God to work, to change us. And the way he's going to change us, we cannot know. He doesn't say, this is what I would do to change you. He works as he wills. Accompanying that prayer is a heart that is willing, ready, prepared to submit himself to the will of God. Wonderful for him to change us because we have a privilege that Israel did not have. Jesus did not only speak the word. He spoke the word. He told of it. He manifested God's presence. He reveals God's presence. He, he doesn't just speak. He his word is accompanied by revelation, by, by demonstration, by a manifestation of the invisible God in the human flesh. So that by two witnesses, no one has an excuse. His word and the revelation of who he is. That's the first thing I wanted to share this morning, brethren. The second one is in chapter four of the same, gospel, of the same epistle. I want to say gospel. Well, verse one of chapter four. Therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, ministry in another, we never give up. Yeah. Look, the temptation to give up. When there are veils, when there is no understanding, when there's no vision, it's great. But God has given us this new way of constantly turning to him, constantly by that allowing the Holy Spirit to give us a vision of the Lord Jesus. Through that revelation, we are strengthened in the heart and enabled to overcome weariness, tiredness, the thing that gives up. The thing that will say, I'm tired. That thing that will say, it is too much. Yes. We find that he strengthens us. That we don't give up. We reject all sh shameful deeds and underhanded methods. We don't try to trick anyone or distort the word of God. We tell the truth before God 
and all who are honest know this. Now look at this verse three. Now, if the God, good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, it is only hidden from those who are perishing. Satan, Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. The second part here is another kind of blindness, another kind of veil that hinders people from seeing the glory of God. It says there that Satan, the God of this world, is actively working, working, weaving a veil in the mind. And it came to my heart, the God of this world, to successfully put that veil in the mind, uses the things of this world, legitimate things of this world, concerns of this world. And he would preoccupy your mind. He would divert, distract our attention from Jesus and focus your mind on something that is not working, on something that is not the way it should be and make you obsessed with it, make you angry, trap you there, the God of this world. And one does not realize that there is somebody actively using the things of this world to turn our hearts away from the Lord. Now that, that is something, that verse the Lord used to help me greatly because at one point, well not one point, many times in Kongsamba, I caught myself carried away, preoccupied with this that's not working, this that's not working, this that's the way it should not be, both in my life, both in the family, in the church, at the clinic, in school, you name it, so many legitimate, wonderful things. Distraction. And before long, I realized that the, 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 the things of this world grip the mind. And once they grip your mind, then the liar, the, the devil, Satan comes there opposing God's will for you. He comes there at one lie after another, one lie after another. And this brother, this sister that was once beaming with joy, you suddenly see them becoming heavy, miserable, sad, weighted down by weights, cares, concerns, with no joy, no peace. When that happens, there's somebody who is actively at work in the mind to make us to live in darkness, to veil, to hinder the gospel, the power of the gospel, to hinder the Holy Spirit from, from, from revealing Christ to our hearts. It strikes me that doubt and unbelief are fed and nourished by the God of this world in the minds of people. Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's, uh, and since it is all invisible, nobody's conscious of this, nobody's aware that something is going on. I can tell you stories here, but I wouldn't because I don't want to mention people's names of brethren. Maybe if I, sh I should mention only my name because at least you see me, you know me, some of you. Wow, brethren. Mm. There is a conspiracy in the heavenly places to make believers, sons and daughters of the Lord, be so preoccupied and carried away by things that are not moving, by things that are wrong, to pray about them of course it's good to pray about them because we have to make our prayer request known unto the lord as the scriptures say but make sure we should be careful lest that becomes an obsession and the glory of god is veiled and we are trapped 
Brethren, because God is bigger than the things that go wrong. No matter how legitimate, no matter, God is greater. I mean, he is, I mean, we are, not, we are limited, but God is limitless in his love and power. And it says there that um, he's blinding the minds of people that don't believe. So when somebody does not believe, he doesn't remain the same. I have noticed that when somebody, when God speaks, when light shines and somebody for some reason or the other rejects it, he doesn't remain the same. Physically, he's the same. He still has the same smiles. He will still greet you after the meeting. He'll probably say the nice things. But if we did not respond to the word of God, there's something that, has, that somebody is actively going to, has added to our minds. Something has come there. We may not be aware of it, but he is at work. He takes opportunity of the fact that I'm not responding to God today. I did not respond yesterday. He comes there and he starts to add his lies and to tie us in knots. Brethren, we have an enemy. Yeah. We have somebody that is actively wanting to turn the house of God, the people of God, you know, Jesus said in Matthew's, in one of the, in one Matthew, Mark, that it is written that the house of God shall be known of all nations, a house of prayer. We will turn it into a den of thieves by making it a place of selfishness. They were going to the temple to do business, but, but gain, 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 self, self, self. You know, actively doing that may, oh, but even though I say these things, I don't want not to continue talking about that because that is not the whole truth. The whole truth is this, that God has not given up on us. He doesn't give up on us. I thank God, brethren, that if I'm speaking here today, you see me speaking like this, I'm speaking like someone whom the great high priest has brought back on the way many times. Oh, because many times I have been caught in Kongsamba and I didn't know who to talk to. And I spoke to one person, or other person, and it confused me more. But Jesus, in his mercy, we are blessed to have Jesus, God's high priest, who is merciful and faithful. Merciful and faithful. Who understands us. Who comes to us with the same love, the same grace, the same mercy. And holds the hand of the person that has fallen off. Has been tormented. Tormented by this particular thing or by that one. Distracted. He comes there gently. He comes and holds our hands. And he speaks gently. He does not brutalize. I mean, he, Jesus is wonderful. He is great. That's why I can talk like this. That's why I have hope for everyone. Amen. Brethren, I have, if I can talk like this, there is hope for everyone. Yes. You, you, you think you know me, but you don't know me. I'm somebody who goes off all the time, falls down all the time. But I have a great, great high priest. I have, I have someone who holds my hand, who has been holding my hand. And now for some days, I can realize at the end of the day that he helped me to stand. I could not stand. I bless God for Jesus. No condemnation, no accusation. <laughs> he comes to you and with a gentle voice, see how he handled the man who fell among thieves. See how it's the story of the Good Samaritan, but really it's a story of Jesus. See how he comes there and sees somebody who is half dead. Wounded. He was wounded in the body. But sometimes when things happen like that, there are wounds in the heart. Wounds in the mind. He came there. He is immediately, he came there and he sprang to work. He ministered. He cared. He washed the wounds. He stopped, he poured up the wine to stop the spread of the infection, stop this thing from going on and on. He poured out the oil. He carried the person to look for a, 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 a place to give him to some people. Wow, that's amazing. The story is wonderful. Wonderful description of who Christ is. I just want to say this morning, brethren, that the thing that encourages me is God commanded light to shine out of darkness at the beginning. That's, that's how the verse goes on. 
And the Lord is able to come to each one. And in spite of all that has been going on, in spite of all those lies, to speak light into that darkness. Our hope is that the Lord is faithful. He does not leave himself without witness. Because even when that's happening, he will put something there. He will speak, speak a word here. He will put someone on your way that will stir you, that will touch your heart, that will say, this is the way. Come out from this way. Come out from that way. But anyone responding to that, God causes great light to shine and to drive away all that darkness, all those lies, and to dismantle all those lies that have been put, strongholds that have been put in the mind, put beliefs, ideas that have been put there that only tormented me. He's able to break them all down. Jesus is able to do that. And he is our hope. He is our only reason to really, beloved, hope, trust, and believe, and repent, and call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus is such a lover, so merciful. He will bring light into darkness. He will completely turn that person and feel somebody whose mind was twisted by lies. He will fill our minds and our hearts with such joy and love and such knowledge of God that that which was meant for destruction, he will use it now to reveal his power. Amazing how he does this. And, and, and the, the, the next verse says that we have this treasure in earthen vessels. My, my Bible says we have, we, we ourselves are fragile, fragile. And he puts this light, this revelation of who he is in, in fragile men and women. Man, it says fragile. He knows we are fragile. He puts it there. And the next verse, I think is the next verse. This says there, we preach not ourselves. That's verse, that's chapter four. Uh, Verse 8, we preach not, oh no. Verse 5. Verse 5, yeah, verse 5. We preach not ourselves. Now that verse came to my heart in a new light. Yeah, because I like giving testimonies. I used to like to give my testimonies, but when, I owned, when the Lord showed me that verse in a new light, I said, okay, Lord, I'll limit this. I will stop this. We preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ the Lord. So I don't go about saying, to people, look, 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 this is me. This is me. This is me. This is me. No. When he puts this treasure in earthen fragile vessels, he wants us fragile as we are, weak as we are, to go everywhere preaching Christ Jesus the Lord, declaring his power to deliver us from darkness declaring his power to set us free from the lies of the devil, declaring his power to keep us, to sustain us in the midst of tribulation, in the midst of all kinds of adverse things, declaring his glory, whether we open our mouths or not, speaking of the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, whether we are speaking by our mouths or by our lives, because the rest of the chapter goes on to describe various experiences that we may be going through. But what should come through all those experiences is the life of Christ being manifested through fragile vessels. True fragile vessels. What is the explanation that this brother is persecuted? He's being crushed. He's, this all is going on, but somehow he is still speaking. He is still talking. What is the explanation? Oh, Jesus tore the veil from his mind. Jesus revealed himself to him. The light of the revelation of God shone in his heart. He is living in fellowship with God. He's being strengthened by the Holy Ghost. He is fragile in himself, but he's being kept by the power of God. He's being kept by the power of God. If you look at him, you see beset by all kinds of things. But he's not saying, oh, be sorry for me. Be sorry for me. He's not pitying himself. He's not saying that life is hard for me. Oh, of course, things are too bad. No, no, no. He's not talking like that. He's manifesting through faith by the help of the Holy Spirit, the power of God, the faithfulness of God. And if he speaks, if he's preaching, if he's speaking like that, it's because he trusts God. He believes God. In other words, 
He lives by the power of the invisible God revealed, ministered to him by Christ, by the Holy Spirit. And so I just wanted to encourage you this morning, brethren, I've been speaking. I didn't think I would speak for over 15 minutes. I just want to encourage you to us this morning that there are many veils, but the Holy Spirit is present to tear them all. There are many temptations along the road, but Christ said the Spirit will glorify him in our lives. Let's let the Holy Spirit help each one of us to become dissatisfied with where we are at and spur each one of us to turn to Christ and to present ourselves to God. And may the Holy Spirit bring light where light is needed, revelation where revelation is needed, freedom in the presence of God where freedom is needed. And may his name be glorified in our lives today. And why not go from glory to glory to glory? Amen. 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 Peter, I finished.